Hi there, welcome to another video of mine. Today we shall have a review about a box, a contacts box. Very nice indeed, quite rectangular, very well finished in leather suede, quite well made, lovely box, isn't it? Well, just kidding. We shall have a look at what's inside the contacts box and that will be the camera that shall occupy us today. So, we have here an um, everyday case for the camera and we have this presentation box, a box that um, was used to sell the Contax T, which is the camera that we shall speak today. And this is the flash, of course. So, um, let's remove the camera from the camera box, put it away and have a chit chat with our contacts T. As you can see or imagine, if you don't know the camera uh, in person, inverted commas, the camera is very, very small and it is a very important camera for contacts. First, it is or it was the first contacts rangefinder camera to come after um, <coughs> the stopping of production of uh, contacts rangefinder cameras in Germany, those with interchangeable lenses, and that for mm, almost 30 years were like his most uh, fearful opponents. So it is important because uh, nearly, what, 20 years or even less after they finished production in Germany, they decided to make another one. but this time with a fixed lens. As usual in my videos, my videos are not really um, manual or videos in a manual, uh, or manual in a video, sorry, uh, about the camera. They are my personal views about some cameras that I have. Uh, let's start by putting the camera into his, its historical context. So this is 1984. And uh, this camera qu caused quite a stir because first it was the first contact rangefinder in many many years. Secondly, it also opened the door to a new segment of the market, which would become known as the luxury fixed lens compact market. But it would take some time because the competition really did not believe in this camera, and were only seduced when Contax launched the Contax T2. And that one, yes, that one had a host, a whole lot of cameras from prestigious manufacturers like, like uh, Ricoh, Nikon, uh, or Minolte, that uh, made also high-end uh, compacts. So, but this is the Contax, and it is 1984, like I said. And I say 1984 because the camera is very classic in appearance and in terms of specifications. It is a rangefinder and in 1984 no one was making rangefinders anymore except for Leica. And um, so it was quite a surprise to see a camera with a rangefinder. Most compacts of the time, and people were crazy about it, were compacts like this from Pentax with autofocus out of everything, flash included. And so this camera caused, you know, a sensation, better still, uh, perhaps some laughter, uh, not from people, but from its rivals, but there weren't really any, so um, contacts couldn't care less. The camera is so very classical in terms of uh, specifications but not so in terms of design. But this design, which was made by Porsche of Germany, has some similarities, uh, namely the retracting system for the lens with this door. This is very similar to another German camera that existed at that time, which was the Minox 35. In this case, this is the GL, but it's the same. 
So you see that they both use the same concept. So Contax um, made its compact following, <coughs> I'm sorry, the Minox style of lens opening. Mm. For the rest, they did not follow Minox, thank God. So while the Minox is an old plastic camera, electronic, um, the Contax is uh, supposedly a camera in metal, in titanium, and finished to a higher degree with much noble materials. Also, this one is notably unreliable, which is not the case of the Contax. Of course, I had to bring the Olympus XA, a camera that uh, is more or less the same size of the Contax. Let me just close the door. And also features a rangefinder, a thing that is absent from the Minox 35. I think that uh, people from Contax also had a deep look into the rangefinder system of the Olympus. So the Olympus is very similar also with an aperture priority exposure system, but it's an old plastic camera. It's not unreliable, but it was not targeted at the high-end market, luxury market of cameras. But in my opinion, this camera came to uh, fill a place left vacant by the Rolly 35, which is here. And so I think uh, by this time, 1984, you could still buy a Rolly 35 SE with a sonar lens, but the camera was pretty much dead. Uh, it was an old design, almost 20 years separate these two, but in terms of market segment, I think they were targeted more or less at the same market. Although the contacts was more exclusive from the very beginning, it did not sell in millions, quite the opposite. The railway was an instant hit. But the concept is the same. High quality, very, very small camera, high quality lens, high quality build. And this is how I would summon the Contax T. Let's start our tour of the camera. So you know by now that it opens like this. There is a hidden button here that creates a gap so that you can open the door more easily. I think the heart of the camera, like any other fixed lens compact, is the lens. In this case, it is a Kalzai Sonar 38mm with a maximum aperture of 2.8 and T star coated, the Zeiss proprietary lens coating. And let me tell you, it's an absolute stunning lens. The sonar that exists in the Rolly 35S, it's not the same lens, but the principle is the same, but they are remar remarkably similar. They are really outstanding lenses. Um, no one can imagine the uh, amount of detail and uh, the, the color rendition that these little lenses are capable of. So, um, either made by Zeiss or made in Japan by Yashiko Tomiyako, whoever made the lens, uh, they were really very uh, good at it. So it doesn't bother me if it isn't really a Carl Zeiss lens. If it is, good. If it isn't, all, all the same, I'm very happy with the camera. Now, the camera has one or two quirks that I don't like. It's an aperture priority camera, meaning in that it's all auto, you don't get to uh, have any manual settings for the shutter, which is okay by me. But, so you have to close and open the diaphragm ring, which is this one, and the camera will match the shutter speed according to the selected aperture. And those shutter speeds go from one, 8 seconds to 1 500th of a second in stepless mode. So far, so good. But as you can see, the ring is really, really tiny. And so uh, you have to be very careful not to rotate the two rings. Sometimes it is 
easier just to grab the both rings, focusing ring and aperture ring, and that's it. And then you focus by the rangefinder. It's really designed for people with very small hands and fingers, especially. And also these hinges here, they do not help to grab for the to grip the focusing ring and the door also it doesn't really help. I think the Minox has the same faults um, and I'm really sad that Contax uh, had to fall into the same quirks as the uh, German counterpart. Well, so up in front there's nothing more to see. So we have the uh, focusing ring. You can focus from one meter to infinity either by guess focusing or using the rangefinder that's built into the camera. Uh, guess focusing is quite easy because we have a 38 millimeter lens. So they've put a yellow dot into the distance ring and into the aperture ring with f8 in green. So if you match the two, you have a depth of field between 1.5 and infinity meters between 1.5 meters and infinity. So it's a sort of snap mode. So it's, you don't have really to focus. Coming here, on the top of the camera, you see that there is no hot shoe. And that's because the flash connects and it's screwed in to the camera, as we will see in a minute. Here, we've got the shutter button that is sort of reddish and for a reason, it's supposed to be synthetic ruby, so very posh. Here you have a digital frame counter, which was uh, not very in accordance with such a classical camera, because not many had digital um, indicators or screens or displays, so uh, and this was very nice um, and very um, high tech. This little button here is for backlight compensation, so it opens the lens or uh, the aperture or the shutter speed to 1.4, 1.5 uh, EV, so it prolongs exposure. Here, labeled ST, is the self timer. And now, this is the crank. To rewind the film, big deal, you show, you can say, but uh, it really is a big deal because it was, if you look closely, it reminds me, at least to me, of um, a car uh, filling cap for the gas tank, so sort of racing. So the camera was designed by Porsche, and I think it shows, it reminds me of that. And it has another function besides rewinding the film after being exposed. When you press this button here and you just turn the crank, you see that these numbers, I don't know if you see them, possibly not, but these are ISO settings. So you set your ISO with the crank and leave it there. And that's it. Really, really uh, very original. And, and quite safe because the system works well. Here you have the viewfinder which is made of, out of sapphire glass and it, this means that it is more um, scratch proof than regular glass. It's bright, it's easy to focus and it shows some speeds, not all speeds that the camera will fire but the most important ones like um, top speed overexposure, um, underexposure, and the risk of camera shake. So it's not very rich in terms of information, but it's what I've got. It's enough, anyway. So let's fire the camera. It is very, very silent. And this is the winding lever. Coming here to the bottom, you see that there is the battery compartment that takes two LR44 batteries of 1.5 volts. 
and you can open it so that you may see that I am not lying here they are for once I don't have my famous aluminium foil in the battery compartment these batteries are readily available everywhere this is the tripod Bosch and this is to free the film tip in order to rewind it this button here is to lock and unlock the back part of the camera because this camera just like the Rolly doesn't have a door it comes apart like this and here we've got the little contacts it's so small that uh, a roll of film here you can you have at least two extra uh, frames you get at least to squeeze uh, 38 39 pictures with no problem this is how it looks when the lens is extended the pressure plate and we're done so you see it is a very simple camera it's a sort of a um, photographer's tool because it's relatively sparse in terms of um, aids of course you can say that it is an auto camera yes but it is auto priority um, aperture priority I mean so it's the most creative auto mode that there is so uh, personally I can't complain and now just to end this part let's see how we fit the flash with the flash it becomes a, an ugly big thing it's horrible to look at it's horrible to handle it really is a mess really I hate it I never use flash so for me it's pretty useless now I would like um, to uh, give you a word of caution some people um, and perhaps Yashiki themselves and the Kyocera group uh, but some people over the internet uh, would like to pass the idea that the, the Yashika, Contact, Yashika Contacts Association was nothing more than rebadged Yashikas and that is not tr true it's true that they shared many components and one of the biggest mistakes intentional or non-intentional is that Yashica T cameras are just like contact cameras and I myself having all the T cameras uh, series can tell you that they're not they're far far from it while Yashica T stands for Tessa lens the T here stands for titanium although there was a black uh, version and contacts was very uh, you know ambiguous about this I don't know if the camera is finished in titanium if this is titanium so there is a sort of mystery but what I wanted to say is this the T stands for titanium while the T in Yashica stands for Tessa and Yashica cameras are just point and shoot plastic cameras so they are very uh, ordinary concerning results except perhaps the T3 which doesn't even feature a Tessa lens it's a different type of lens although it says Tessa but it isn't um, and so this one contacts cameras the T, T2, T3 have nothing in common uh, with the uh, T-series from Yashica in terms of quality of results of the feeling of handling the technology nothing so don't get carried away by what you hear uh, the results that I've got from the T and T4 are very very disappointing the Yashikas the T3 is a different story it's quite competent but no match for this of course and uh, I've seen people asking crazy money for a T4 like 500 euros and with that money I was 
have to control myself and I was going to say something that I would regret. So uh, for that kind of money, just uh, wait for a good contacts T. It's much better, or a T2 if you like autofocus cameras. So don't let that all that blur about famous people using those cameras and think that they are contacts derived cameras, which they are not. And to end this presentation of my contacts T, just one minute to tell you, you know that most of my cameras have a story be behind it. And this one is no exception. I bought this outfit in Germany many years ago, about 15 years ago. And it was a non-working camera. So it was a dead camera from a store, a shop. And the, uh, the man uh, in the counter was really very worried with me because he thought I didn't uh, understand that the camera was defect, kaput. <laughs> um, and I assured him that I understood that, that it didn't work. But he said, look, Zeiss declared it, uh, it irreparable. It cannot be repaired, ever. Are you sure that you understand? And I said, yes, I do. I want to buy it. So I bought the outfit for a very low price and uh, brought it back here with me. And immediately I contacted my friend who uh, normally uh, manages to resurrect all my dead cameras and I showed him this. And I said it was not working and what he could do. Uh, he looked at this and he said probably nothing, electronic cameras, this, this and that, nye, 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 nye. this is going to be very difficult. And my friend has a very nice personality, likes to torture people. And so next day he called me and he said, oh, this is not looking good. So be prepared to say goodbye to the contacts because this, this one is not going to come back from the dead. Okay. Next day he phoned me again and he said, no, I'm sorry, still no news. This is um, very difficult to, to repair. And please notice that I never called him. It was him calling me. And on the third day, just like Jesus, he called me and he said, when are you coming by? And I asked him, coming by, what for? And he said, to pick up the contacts. And I said, oh, there's plenty of time for that. If you can't, if you can't repair it, uh, when I can, I will go and pick it up. And he said, no, it's repaired. Come and pick it up. And so I went immediately there to pick up the contacts. So after three days around the camera, he identified a problem, which was the metering cell, which was dead. And he managed to identify the cell. Uh, so he went to his camera scrapyard and he told me that the cell is common to uh, Yashica rangefinder and so it just swapped the metering cell and I have a contacts here working very well takes very well exposed pictures the cell is the same according to him I don't know from which Yashica took the cell uh, possibly an electro possibly I don't know he never told me so you see that sometimes miracles can happen by the end of this video, you'll find some pictures taken with this camera, some in color, others in black and white, but converted from the same roll of film. It's, um, I'm sorry for the quality of the photographer, but I quite like the results that this camera gives. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you very soon in another video of mine.